What's poppin'? We back again with another episode of Booking Boys. Pop, 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 pop. P. Diddy in the city. <laughs> Radio. He had the game from fucking Brooklyn, man. Fuck uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. The world, that's all the world seems to be talking about these P. days. P. Diddy, right? See, we still in P. Diddy fucking hell right now. <laughs> I don't even know how to feel about Diddy no more, man. Like, good or bad or indifferent. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent, bro. Like, um, I know we heard rumors of the things that he... The, the things he allegedly been doing for years and years and years, but at the end of the day, bro, it's not it's not really my business. I don't agree with um with those types of things, but you know I let the let the man have his day in court, and we'll see. Hey, we see what happens, man. That's, that's what I say, man. <clears throat> How are you though? I, I'm great, man. I'm great, man. I, I went to a concert last night. I was very happy about the concert. Okay, tell us. Got to see tell us about this concert. London yesterday, I got to see uh, 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 Maxwell. He killed the show. You know Maxwell from you know East New York. You know he's Haitian, right? Yeah, but he's from East New York. Oh, so. But you know he was Haitian before he was from East New no, York, he's right? No, East... he's Haitian and Puerto Rican. No, but you know he was Haitian before he was he's from, from East New, New York. York. That's all but I But you know about. he was Haitian. Shout out to East New York, man. Maxwell, shout, shout out, he shout shout out to the Haitians. Haitians. He and we don't out need East cats, like and we don't need dogs. <laughs> we shot, he shouted out. Yo, this thing is crazy. God damn it. <laughs> he shouted out East New York a whole bunch of times last night. You know I hung out with Maxwell before? Yeah. Yo, so Maxwell got to be one of the coolest dudes. So, my... A, a, a industry friend of mine, Al Branch, <coughs> one time. Oh, I know me, Al. Me, um, took me, my man, Irk. I can't remember who else was with us out one night. So we all went out. And Mac, I don't know if Maxwell was his client or not. And we hung out, got to hang out with Maxwell, right? So we had like went to like a, a, a bunch of different clubs in the city. But we ultimately ended up at this club called Bed. I don't know if you remember Club Bed. I remember Bed. Bed. On the rooftop with all the beds. It was and Bed and Duvet, yeah. yeah. So, yo, Max was so cool. When he found out I was from Eastern York, and we was from East New York. He was like, hype, like, yeah, y'all from my, you know what I mean? I'm like, what part of East New York for? He from the J-Line, though. He like from where the, where the Puerto Ricans mm -hmm, and stuff mm -hmm. is at, up that top, up top. You know, we from. And it's so crazy, because when you see Maxwell, you wouldn't expect him to act like that. Right? Nah. <laughs> like, and he was like, he, it was like a Dave Chappelle skit, you know, listen, bro. <laughs> he got right into East New Yorkian and mode. It, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And from that point, yo, Maxwell was so smooth. Every chick in the building was like, after Max. He was like, yo, you like, you want, yo, come hang out with my man, man. Yo, you go hang out with my man. So we yo, just hung out. In these days and times, we can't even say shit don't like say that. shit like that, bro. Yeah, we can. It was, in these it was, days it was and friendly. times, it was friendly. don't say shit no, but like was, that, No, but was, this was no P. Diddy party. Okay, I'm, I'm, just, saying, I'm no. just saying, in these days and times, <laughs> yeah, we, he was good to you. Don't, don't mess it up. Max, yeah, it, don't, it was good. Don't leave him liable to some bullshit, Yeah, bro. but it wasn't like that. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He gave the cosign, like... Yo, this from, they from East New York. This, my, this you know, my man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, the ladies, oh, that's your friends. Are we cool? Like, you know what I'm saying? We had a good time. <laughs> we had a good time. We had a good time in Club Bed. You know what I'm saying? We had a good time. We had a good time, man. But Max, shout out to Max. He killed the bar clear yesterday. Um, shout out to uh, Jasmine Sullivan. Uh, she, shout out to Al Branch. She, she really killed. Um, shout out to Al. She really killed the bar clear yesterday, bro. Yeah. Yo, Jasmine, man. She didn't do Lions and Tigers and Bears, and Maxwell didn't do Woman's Worth. I don't understand why those two songs wasn't performed. But Jasmine, you killed it. And you know something? One of, I'm not saying this is her first session, but one of her sessions, she was like 15 years old. She probably won't even remember that. I remember um, uh, 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 Mona Scott had brought us. They needed a studio to record in. And Mona Scott, her, Missy, and her mom had came down to my studio. I had a studio on 9th Avenue. Listen, we're on the 90th episode of this podcast. You've said I had a studio on 9th Avenue. No, nah, I, I said 30th. I had mad studios. Okay, this, so this at, at this point, just save my studio back in the days. Because everybody I, knows you had, you had a studio. I had multiple studios, bro, but this was I know, but I'm just saying. Okay. Just in case she watch it and she okay. be like, what studio was that? It was okay. on 9th Avenue. But anyway, yeah. 9th and what? Between 44th and 43rd, it was around the corner from Daddy's house. Okay. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and Jerry Wonder Studio was up around the other corner. Okay. Um, the Booker Basement? <laughs> so, yeah, we had, we, you know, but she came. But the reason why I say that, yo, she been singing like that since 15 years old. So, like, dope. the vocals been that powerful. I remember when, we, I wish Irk was here. I remember when she came to the studio and she opened up her mouth. Shout out Mr. Spice Talk. Yeah, shout out to Irk. Happy for 50th winning, uh, birthday. Once again, happy 50th birthday and Plug for winning out that fridge. Uh, the, the Gersh Tournament. The Gersh Tournament. Yeah, there he just go. turned 50. Shout out to Irk. 
But yeah, we all just was like in the studio like- Damn, Eric, I couldn't get invited to the 50th birthday party? <laughs> That's crazy. I wasn't even here. He invited me, but I came back a day later. But yeah, we all looked at her like, yo, who is this girl, little girl? Like, why she sound like that? She how old? 15. Amazing. Like, you know what I mean? But last night, she grew up though. She definitely grew up. She had this one move she kept doing <clears throat> with her hand up in the air, doing all that. I was like- yeah, she, she grew up nice. She grew up. <laughs> you sound diddyish. Come on, B. This is a grown ass woman. She oh, gotta be I'm her mid thirties, bro. What's, what's wrong with you? Uh, you can't say fifteen <laughs> and in the same sentence talking about she grew up nice. With this she grew weird, up. This is like this almost weird, twenty years ago. Ass look on your face, like <laughs> <laughs> she grew up nice, man. Yeah, I holler at right now. I would, I would care. Hey, now today she's like 34, 35 years old. How old is Jasmine Sullivan? Somebody looked it up. She got to be about 34 years, 35 years old, something like that. You want to cut that part out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, nigga. That ain't yeah. censoring my shit. Yeah. <laughs> but now the concept, but the, I think I was telling you this earlier. Yes, but I'm you sure, did. You were very happy about yes, it. Yes, I was so happy. I watched your story and I saw it too. It was, it was, it was a dope. Uh, people were singing. That's fuck you, Mo. Mo is like, you know, I hate this nigga. But anyway, <laughs> so we was leaving the concert and they put on, um, what's the song again? Before I Let, Let Go. Go. They put on that by, by Frankie Beverly and Maze and they put on that song. And it was crazy because I think it started from my tunnel. I, I really think so. It was these girls. They just start singing this, singing it loud. And we went out inside the concert and then the whole hallway sung the song in unison. I was like, yo. It just felt good to see people, black people, those in one on one accord. They, they sung the whole song from the top to the bottom, and it was just really dope, man. So I just I like that. You I get know. impressed very easily, bro. Oh, whatever, man. It was dope. Just to see <laughs> perfect strangers. Everybody just jumped in. It was a concert outside the concert. It was just dope. You know man. they weren't singing together. They were singing to the song that was playing, right? You couldn't hear the song no more. No, but you know that they were singing to the song. Yeah, but when you came out, you could hear everybody was just going, bro. It was just, it was I'm, really dope. Was I'm really glad dope. it was a moment. Yeah, go to my Instagram. It's probably going. Well, it's in my story. It's probably going by the time. But yeah, it was in it. I'm it happy. For, I'm happy for you, brother, that you had that experience. <laughs> this nigga's a hater. He ain't got no love in his life. Man. Fuck this nigga. <laughs> <man. Sure. laughs> it was good. The show was good. October <clears> London, <throat> you did your thing. Um, they should give you just a little bit more time, but you know, you knew all this. You gonna get there. That, that was dope. I never knew he was signed to Death Row with Snoop and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. with the new death, the new Death Row. Yeah. Okay. Dope. And I seen Death Row put up a movie the other day. I was just watching. I was like, these, this Death Row still moving out here. They working. Streets. Yeah. yeah. Harry O. Yeah, that big ass logo came on. How old was she, Swap? So I... Thirty-seven. See, we ten years apart, bro. Okay. I'm going in. More power to you. Go. Let me go to Philly. This guy's crazy. <laughs> so that's my week. How was your week, though? <laughs> oh, uh, my daughter got married a uh, week and a half ago. Oh, congratulations to Paige. I'm not calling you that other shit, though, but uh, congratulations, it, Paige. Yeah, congratulations, Drew. Oh, Paige. <laughs> um, but yeah, my daughter got married. It was out in PA. It was a really nice ceremony. Um, I enjoyed it. I was father of the bride, walked down the aisle. You know, she looked nice in her dress, too. Yeah, she did. She looked real she looked nice. Very nice she in her real dress. Nice. Um, it was a really nice ceremony, really nice wedding. Um, I enjoyed, you know, she's happy. That's what's most important. Man, no, nah, man. They happy. Shout out to Paige. Keep saying Paige, too. Hey, Paige. <laughs> Shout out to Paige. <laughs> Shout out to Paige, man. <laughs> so I think we could jump right into this show. Bum, 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 bum. So many things happened this week, man. <clears throat> I want to jump into, like, the New York City shit that's happening real quick because we're here in New York, so I want to jump to that real quick. But it's also been like a sad week, this sad two, three weeks, maybe a sad 30 days, maybe a sad year for black men all period. <laughs> because the shit that's happened to the black people, especially black men, is a little crazy. I'm about to say, who is that? But all right, cool. Um, yeah, but New York City news is jumping in. Uh, Mayor Adams has been indicted. 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 Um, they say Mayor Adams uh, misappropriated funds in his last... 10 years being a part of different city, I guess, or councils and shit like that. He was Brooklyn Borough President. Brooklyn, for quite Brooklyn some time. Borough President. Um, now he's the mayor. Um, so he's been indicted. Um, you know, and I took the time out this morning. I'm not even an avid news watcher like that, but I want to hear what the, uh, the uh, district attorney yeah, had to say um, about it. And, you know, some clarity kind of came to me, man. So this, is, this, this investigation, they say, it spans over 10 years. So the feds that came in and 
said, yo, listen, we're going <clears> to <throat> get down on him and um, whatever. And they had, they had all the charges that he, uh, conspiracy and different charges that he, would, that he had. All right, love. Had different charges. And then they had the breakdown of the monies that was um, taken and when they was taking the years they was taking in and what they were taking for. Long story short, there was almost about like $20,000, $120,000 worth of charges, worth of things that they said he took money. Over 10 years. Over 10 years time. <clears throat> so over 10 years, they saying he took this money from the Turkish government. Okay. For, and it could be bribery that was going on. They're it could not be considered saying, bribery. It could be considered bribery. So what these charges are for, which I thought was kind of crazy to me, this is me, and maybe somebody could tell me something else. One, they had a black guy, this black nerdy guy who was the, the district attorney that was telling the story. I was like, damn, they just sent a black dude to go get the black dude. You know what I'm saying? To me, I just thought that was kind of crazy. And then, Ain't that how it always go down? And then when they start explaining it to you, you know, I don't know if anybody who watching this has been locked up or listening to this has been locked up. They kind of break down every charge to make it sound more crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, it didn't sound crazy. So basically what this shit is, is charges over plane flights. So basically, he went to like Africa and took the Turkish airline and he got a seat upgrade for two people that was worth like 41000 between the two people. It's a hell of a plane ticket. Plane, plane ticket, right? So, but they gave him a free upgrade. So they saying that's, he didn't get physical money. Mm -hmm. They saying because the he plane- got, He got perks. Perks, yes. <clears throat> so they say there's another plane flight that he took to India that was like 16,000. Another plane flight that went to somewhere else was like 12,000. Another plane flight for another 12,000. Then another plane flight for like 9,000. These are all plane flights that they talking about here. Well, you know, thank God I'm not a politician because even me, like sometimes I'll go to a hotel and somebody will recognize me and they'll be like, yo, let me give you a room upgrade. You know what I mean? Or I'll go places and people will literally upgrade my services simply because they know who I am. You know, so that's just kind of weird to me. So now, <clears throat> now this is what I would say. One sketchy part, I guess, if you want to find something sketchy in this, because I want to give the whole spill. They saying that the Turkish government, first of all, they don't know, it was undisclosed why he went to oh, they don't these know places. Why. Okay. So I guess you, if you're a public official, you have to disclose who gave you what perks and what you was going yeah, there yeah, for. Yeah, every year you have So to. he never disclosed mm -hmm. why he went to these places, right? That's or that, or that he got those upgrades. Or he got the upgrades, <clears throat> right? So I guess the Turk, somebody that's part of the Turkish government or whatever the case may be, they was building a, a building in New York City. They said that FDNY never completed their inspection of the city because there was some discrepancy. Uh, the Turkish government was complaining like, yo, we supposed to open up our building months ago. This is taking too long. FDNY taking too long. They said May Adams got the phone call and he called FDNY. and was like, look, man, get this building open. I don't know what's the problem. Get the building open. FDNY said they felt like they were pressured. When the FDNY they say this, it was with the uh, attorney saying, um, this attorney is going, yeah, FDNY. The pressure was applied to the FDNY. Yeah. Like, I yo, mean, that is a hell of a coincidence, right, though. Right, The FDNY said, <clears throat> uh, said, yo, listen, we felt like we was going to lose our jobs if we didn't get the building open in, in, in enough time for Mayor Adams. So they say that's, that's the bribery, right? Cause, I mean, that is a hell of a coincidence. Right? So that's the bribery. There's... there's Hundreds of developers <laughs> in Manhattan right now. That's just a hell of a coincidence. Yo, I'm just saying. And me working is, <clears throat> I worked in construction for a little bit. Mm -hmm. This shit happens all the time, right? Somebody calls somebody, and somebody has skipped the yeah, line. Yeah, but yeah, I understand. But for the mayor himself to make a call, that usually happens if someone has a direct contact or some type of pull, bro. Yo, listen. That does not just usually happen like that. Listen. And I'm not saying that he did anything. I'm listen. just saying that usually that's. Somebody Yo, Mo, called in a favor. Guess what? For the mayor guess what? to make the call directly? Guess what? <clears throat> Even if he, so I don't give a fuck, me personally. First of all, we live in a government that 
one hand wash the other all of the time. Course. We watch the crime bills disagree. that happen, the, the medical bills that happen. They grease the pockets of the politician and the, and the bills get passed. What I'm saying to you, if Mayor Adams even had a connection because he got some free Turkish flights and this man called him and said, yo, can you help me with my building, man? They just take it too long. I don't see what the problem is. If this is the not a big uproar to stop the city. The problem is that that's bribery to a degree. Yo, listen. Mo, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like I said, this shit right here, for black people to be going through the shit, and this, mayor, we, we got all kind of mayors that, that went through. And then what they were saying was like, oh, this is the only mayor in New York City history that's been indicted. It's been man mayors all throughout the country that's been indicted for other things. They didn't say and the then, country, they said the city. City, bro. yes, but they, first they didn't, they didn't explain it like that. They go, it's the first May indictment, and then they say New York City. It's, well, I just watch how they set it up. You know they're up. always going to paint things a certain Yeah, they paint. Way. I'm watching how the and, picture that they paint. And this is why, like, man, you constantly go through this back and forth. As a black person that reaches a certain level, you should be aware and carry yourself a certain way to protect yourself because nobody else is going to protect you. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. What I'm <clears> disagreeing <throat> with is just the treatment that they really trying to take down. And it's crazy because... You keep saying be aware, and I'm going, yo, when do we fight and go, yo, enough is enough to get in this treatment. How do we get out of this bureaucracy, man? Like, this shit is crazy. Like, you would have thought, when I heard the charges, I thought, like, he was taking mad hundreds, millions of dollars. He was scamming. He was, he was taking bribery, all kind of shit. It was all kind of shit going on. And then I heard... It's about plane fucking well, me, tickets over well, me, 10 years? Let me, let me put you on to something. Bribery isn't always a financial exchange. Sometimes bribery is basketball tickets. Sometimes bribery is tickets to a baseball I'm game. I'm not saying that. No, we I'm, know that. I'm, I'm just telling you. like, and, I'm, and, and in no way am I saying that the mayor's guilty. That's not... All I'm saying is, at the end of the day, bribery comes in many forms. That's not what I'm saying to you. <clears throat> at the same time, then we, we all these politicians got to go down. You know how many niggas got free baseball tickets? Un Listen, unfortunately, we live in a world where people who get targeted are the people that go down. Everybody doesn't go down. That's not the way it works. Yo, you know how many guys are on the street selling drugs? It ain't all of them that go down. It's the ones that get targeted. Like, that's like I said everybody you, who's doing wrong. Guess what? Anybody, the, the ones that get targeted the way, is the ones that look like us. That's not the way life like works. Guess what? The way it works is one that look like us is getting targeted. And this is and why. When you come, and when you break down the fundamental of what the charges are about, and how they paint in the picture and how it's on every New York, every paper in New York City and across the country. It's on every news outlet across the country. And they're making this shit down. When they break down the charges, we're talking about plane tickets over 10 years, bro. We're we talking about plane years. To, look, you, you know what Giuliani did to this fucking, this fucking, um, this fucking, uh, this fucking city? Yeah. yeah do you dude. know what Bloomberg was doing for the city? Like, like, do you know what? Catching the rest of these niggas, like, are you, are y'all crazy? We talking about plane tickets over a ten year span for a mayor that been in office for two years. Unfortunately, we're not the people in power that get to decide who gets targeted and who doesn't. All I know is that as a black man, you get to a certain level, you cover your ass. You know what I'm saying? You remain aware and you don't put yourself in position. Yeah, you keep being Uncle Tom's son. How's that, Uncle no, Tom? Listen. Telling you to protect yourself is being listen. Uncle. Oh, okay. So you know what, black people, when you get to a certain level, do all types of fuckery so that nah, you can get we, ousted and you can lose do, your position. That's what, what you can what do. What we need to do. Follow styles. Yeah. Follow styles. And, listen and to dumb follow ass styles smoke. and don't live in reality. No, we're not, right? I'm not talking and, about and, living in reality. And, and totally, we keep totally ignore we, the position that we are in as black people in this world and don't be careful. That's we right. Keep Do whatever down. the hell you want. We keep sitting down <laughs> and letting niggas just take the power. Letting what? We're not in Yo, control. Listen. So how will you let... Okay. What you talking so about? You, you don't what? fight nothing? So you know what? You how don't about fight this? nothing? So, and we got so, niggas like so you that, 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 so that you decide, turn coat this whole so situation. How about this? So you decide, okay, so what make Mayor Adams about? not go to jail. It's that simple. What? Make Mayor Adams not get charged. Whatever, nigga. No, I'm saying since you got the power, bro. Whatever, nigga. Like I said... Whatever, nigga. Like I said... Mo's an ass, but listen, I'm a realist, bro. When they gonna run down his ass, I'm gonna sit here and be I'm like, yo, listen, Mo know they not, better? They not gonna run down on my ass because I cover my ass, bro. Yeah, okay. Like, uh, Mo, man, I, I hear you, I man. don't put myself in them positions anymore, my nigga. Listen, man, other New York City news, I don't wanna talk to Mo about this no more because we gonna fight this motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck this nigga. I'm fighting for power. Black power, people. I mean, black power all day long. Fuck but this until nigga, until we get the power, let's be realistic people, and be aware of the position that we are in so that we don't keep putting listen, ourselves in position listen, to get fucked over. Nigga got, That's nigga all. Go, nigga going to jail for a buddy pass, bro. Like, fuck. Like, 
L- listen, I'm not, I'm not having it, bro. I want to hear some. Re- I thought it was some real serious shit. We talking about buddy pass upgrade on plane tickets. Stop, man. And it's no real. Stop what? Ugh, Where did I say the mayor's wrong? All I said was, as black people, you get to a certain level, protect Yo, yourself. Can I ask you a question? I got the AC on because <clears throat> he making me hot, man. He giving me ideas here, bro. I'm, I got motherfucking and this nigga making me hot, bro. Turn the motherfucking AC on. Fuck this nigga. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Whatever, man. Anyway, enough of New York City news. New York, <laughs> concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Whatever, man. They're going to take your dream away from you. That's what they're going to do, niggas. Yes, other bad news in New York City. New York City has been dubbed the worst city to date. To, to date in, like, so if y'all look, if you New York Blame City. Blame it on the bad bitches. <laughs> if you looking for... A chick, and you looking for a good time, and or you looking for a good dude? Don't do it in New York City, man. Go somewhere else, man. I think that's because in New York, everybody crazy. Who crazy? You crazy, bro? Everybody crazy, bro. See, this is the problem. This is why I'm sitting here with a, a mad man. I think everybody's crazy. <laughs> I'm sitting here with a mad man. Everybody, everybody's, everybody's living in their own state of delusion. <clears throat> New York City, man. Listen, man. <clears throat> they say it's hard out here dating. It's hard out here for a pimp. I think New York City, though, is one of the most busiest cities, though. Busy, huh? <clears throat> well, if you travel and you go to other places, other places are more calm. Like, people chilling. You know, and I think people got time to kind of date. New York City always, like, it's kind of on the move all the time. Shit is always happening. I think happening. people act like they on the move in New York City. A lot of that, people. That could be true too. People but act like they have no time when the truth is. But it's always be, motion here. Motherfuckers be home in front of their television. Bro. Nah, 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 nah. Because you go outside and be. <laughs> yo, I, what I can say about New York, you could go outside in any god given time of night and his niggas outside. I think it, I think it used to be. I, I don't think, like, especially post pandemic, I don't think it's. Like that, yeah, as I much depends because a lot of places be. closed now. Yeah, yeah. That's why New York <laughs> nightlife, was, New York nightlife died down. But yo, if y'all want good nightlife, look at y'all this got to go promotion. check out my man. Um, look, look at him. My man look RJ look. Spot on Forty Third and Tenth in Hell's Kitchen called Saint Lounge. I'm telling y'all, that is that pre-pandemic vibe. <laughs> it is the shit. Now nah, New York City live again. So if nah, you want to date, go to yo, Saint. Bro, Saint Lounge. See, now you want to date, go to Saint. You know what I'm saying? Go to Saint. I'm telling y'all. But yeah, New York City. RJ, what up? New York City uh, dating is uh, down. So if you're looking for some action, I guess you go to the neighboring states like Jersey, Philly, Boston. What's, I mean, what, you know, like you're, you're all in the dating world. So, I mean, do you think that New York, that, do you feel like New York might be the worst place for dating? Um, and why do you think that that might be? I think the women are different. From the man's standpoint, like I think the women are a little bit different out here. Do you like, think women have unrealistic expectations in New York? Um, or some unfair of, expectations? Some of them can. Um, <clears throat> the you know, I, I I think women are trying to get back what 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 uh what niggas took from the cold crush. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, is it really that, no, or, or is no, it, or, think, or, or is it just they watch too many reality shows and listen yeah, to too many Yeah, but I think those songs? realities come from a place, right? Like women not feeling liberated and now feeling the space they could do and say and be free as they want to be, right? So I think that comes with some level of like, yo, we here now, bitches, you but know is, what I'm saying? But is that the case? Because if you really think about it, right, when you're talking about these women that are in the dating world that are in their mid-20s or 30s, bro, they never really experienced any nah, of that. No, but they get, no, they don't. <laughs> they never yeah, but experienced no, 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 no. any but, of that. But that, just because they haven't experienced it doesn't mean they don't have the effects of it. You know, it's like, it's like any kind of uh, uh, post- Traumatic, tra- traumatic PT- shit. PTSD. PTSD it it kind of trickles down. So they mama told them, they mama mama told them what was going on, and now they just ain't having it. So I think that's a part of it. I'm not making that an excuse, but I think that's a part of part of the reason why some of the women feel more like, nah, nigga, I I, I got to get him before he get me type shit. You know what I'm saying? And and I think the men are waking up too at this point. Is like. They coming like, yo, we not having that new. I'm taking y'all bitches nowhere. Like, we ain't going nowhere. I ain't spending no money. All you want is my bread. Like, so I think that both of those things clashing is like a perfect storm. And we at this tipping point, we got to figure out who going to nudge first. But I, I mean, I think I think the problem is that um, men have a bar set 
that they have to reach. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there's a bar set for women. I think all that's required of a woman, uh, all that is required of a woman is that she exists, right? Like a woman could literally not cook, not clean, not nurture, and it's like, well, she ain't your slave. And that doesn't make her any less of a woman. But as soon as a man doesn't handle any of his responsibilities, he's less of a man. You want to start? I totally, I, I agree with that to some degree. I do, because if, 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 if a dude go like, listen, man, I ain't got the money this week. You a bum ass nigga. You a you bum know? ass nigga. But if a woman says, <laughs> I ain't cooking this I, week. I don't feel like cooking this week. It's like, it's oh, nothing. she ain't your slave, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's a double standard. It's a double standard in that kind of way. But look, this is another thing I just read too. They said by 2030, 75, 70, no, 45 percent, by 70, 30, 45 percent of women will be singleless. Single and childless. And childless. I believe it. I, I really believe that that's where we are headed. And, and it's so crazy because, I mean, for the past 50 years, we thought that, that the human race would go extinct um, because of a comet that comes out of the sky or because of a tsunami. But we never imagined that it's going to be because of bad bitches and feminism. Um, I think I think that may play a part in that, man. You know, we did a study last week. I think it was last week episode or the week after, the week before, when they even was talking about the Y chromosome are starting to disappear from men. So that could be part of the problem. Too. Yeah, but that's but, but that's <laughs> a lot but, of things could contribute. But that's to also this. but that's all. What you also have to understand is adaptation, right? Evolution. Um, human beings, we react our environment, right? And what people don't understand is the testosterone in your body, your testosterone levels can be affected by environment. So all of this toxic um, masculinity talk, all of this emasculation, all of this, the push of the homosexual agenda, bruh, all of that can affect your testosterone and it can affect evolution, the evolution of a man, believe it or not. I think it's just the food they're putting in our <clears throat> system, man. And of course, the chemicals and all that. Chemicals but, and, but what I'm mean? saying is that plays a part, but it's like we're being attacked by so many, we're, we're being attacked in so many different directions. Like it's no, ridiculous. No, I do feel like there's a, so, uh, <clears throat> a, 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 a attack on definitely men. On, on masculinity, um, there's a huge attack on masculinity. But I also feel like a lot, once again, I feel like a lot of these women feel liberated and women don't want to be tied down with kids so I can see them being childless because some women ain't, I don't want to have no kids. You know what I mean? Young girls I talk to now, I'm like, I ain't having no kids. I don't want no husband. You know what I mean? But I will tell you this, though. Um, not being, a, not, not a woman, but just as a human being, I don't think none of us is meant to grow old alone. And, 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 and being old by yourself, you know, it sounds good, but it, it's not good. When you got nobody to turn to and no loved one that's going to be who's there for you for better or worse, because you know your kids grow older. And if you ain't got no kids, then, you know, because they say childless too, then who do you turn to? So we wasn't supposed to be here alone. So, you know what I mean? Um, more power to it. You know? But I, I, no, it ain't more power to it, because I'll, I'll go a step further, bro. Um, What's, what's happening is, and I don't mean to get all biblical, but these are the end of days. These are the end of times. And the reason I say that is because what we're watching is we're watching humankind reject everything natural, bro. Anything that has to do with nature, anything natural, we turning our backs away from, right? So it is our natural function to reproduce because that's why we're placed on this earth in order to continue our species. And what we don't understand is once we turn our backs on nature and everything natural, we're basically turning our back to God. I'm not debating that at all. I'm not debating that at all. But what I will say, there is a couple that this will not happen to. And who is that couple? There's a, a British couple. Remember that thing we were talking about a couple of months ago? What, the suicide pod? The suicide pod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a British couple that has signed up for the suicide pod, and they're going to do it together. And they're going to film each other's, they're going to have their film together, and um be the first ones in history to say, hey, euthanize me and more yeah. turning away from God. <laughs> taking 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 the uh that power away from God and putting it in the hands of man, bro. Like this I shit, guess they don't this shit yo bro. They don't wanna die alone without but, each other. But people don't realize what's happening, man. And I don't mean to get all biblical, bro, but this shit is happening right in front of our faces and we are too blind to even see. You know, they said that in the end it's gonna be man versus machine, bro. And what's happening is man is evolving and getting so intelligent to a point that we think we can outsmart nature when we can't. And in the end, nature, Mother Nature's gonna come back and kick our asses. I'm telling well, you, man. Well, I don't know if Mother Nature's gonna come back and kick our ass or if Cardi B just trying to kick offset ass because <laughs> 
was, <laughs> yo, this, what's up with him and these transitions today? Because <laughs> Cardi B. Ooh, there's some wild shit being said. <laughs> Cardi B and Offset, what's going at it today, bro? I, yo, this is a whole bad bag of dope, bro. This one right here, bro. I see, I woke up this morning, I just I opened up my Instagram, and Cardi B was just going ape shit. I'm like, and she's saying she, you know, is is she slinging pussy again and all kind of, I, I didn't know what was going on. But apparently Offset has been calling her phone off the hook. She ain't been answering. Offset has been cheating, seeing other women, I guess, throwing certain things to her face. And Cardi be like, look, man, nigga, I'm, I'm not having it, bro. And I'm out here, and you mad now because I'm giving it up. And, you know, Offset kind of made a, a statement on, I think it was Twitter, saying that she had sex with somebody while she was pregnant. I don't, Cardi didn't really address that, but she she just said, you mad because I'm messing with other dudes now. I hope Cardi B didn't give some niggas some coochie while she was pregnant. As you say all of this, all I could think about is, these are some of our children's role models, bro. <laughs> this shit is crazy. Um, yeah, I just, everything else I thought was kind of whack, though, for both of them, because y'all got three beautiful kids. They, their kids are beautiful, too, by the way, um, together, man. And, you know, the world we live in, all they got to do is be 5, 10 years old, 10, and just punch their shit up and go about, back to these conversations, How about bro? forget punching it up? Don't you know that the kids in their schools are going to know about this, and they're going to be teasing them kids, and they're going to be getting at them. Like, like people don't think, man. They got to pay for homeschool, bro, because... <laughs> people don't think. Yeah, like, uh, y'all family at the end of the day, man, and I know y'all don't see that now because y'all young, y'all young in it. I know Offset got kids already. I think these are Cardi's first kids, and y'all young, y'all don't see it, but 20 years from now, 10 years from now, fuck, five weeks from now, this shit ain't going to even matter. Can we, can we normalize being civil... When breaking up with someone you have children with, man, like, can we normalize regardless of what your emotions is, just just letting it go and letting it be for the sake of the kids, you understand, and for the sake of just being able to co-parent going forward because y'all are going to have to be in each other's lives for the next probably 18 years, you know what I mean? Like, can we, can we normalize that? Yeah, that, yeah, man, you know, listen, <clears throat> I don't care who fucking who or what, who, who doing what to whatever, but when you add the kids involved in this, man, like... Yeah, you got to think about your kids first. And this is just from a parent to another parent. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to protect the integrity of your child's mother. Your child mother got to uh, protect the integrity of her child's father. And y'all should be protecting that. And y'all got your own bickering. Y'all do that amongst each other. And by protecting each other, y'all protect y'all children. Children. Exactly right. And y'all need to do whatever y'all got amongst each other, not for the world to see. So that's the sad part. You know what I mean? Like in that. And I know it's some hurt going on. I know Cardi probably want to express herself, Offset want to express herself. I just don't know why y'all got to do it on Twitter. Go get a counselor. Fight with them. Go or tell your family. Huh? Or on Instagram Live. Huh? On Instagram Live. Yeah. Nah, you know what I mean? Listen. But he was going to add it too on um, on Twitter. Whatever yeah. He was, I'm, I'm saying know, the both of them. The both of them. The them, both you know of them. Like... like you Take know, two somebody, somebody got to be the bigger person in the situation to just be like, yo, you know what? This shit is stupid. I'm not doing this, man. You know, sometimes people go off at the mouth and you got to just let them have that. Like, it is what it is. Well, Francis is from Cardi. But anyway, wish y'all the best. Yeah, definitely wish y'all the best. Let me ask you a quick question. Outside let me give box. you a quick answer. Do you think women with BBLs attract a certain type of men? Now, I think I think there's 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 two different components to that to the answer, right? Um, I think women with BBLs as a whole attract men that want to sleep with them, right? Um, but I think it's a certain type of man a lot of times that would take them serious. But I still think that's not always the case. You know, because I think that there's a lot of different BBLs, right? You got the women who get the BBLs that are outrageous, right? Um, then you have women who get the fat transfer, right? They get the BBL that just makes them a little more curvy, right? Because I, I think that things have changed, and this isn't 20 years ago, right? I think BBLs are like 
fucking eyelashes now, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand? Everybody what, got them. You get, you get what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you know, for me, I think men attracted, first of all, men attracted to anything. But you know what I'm saying? We, we like natural or BB. I don't, I, it, a lot of us can't even tell the difference. Yeah. A lot of times I can't even tell the difference. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I would say that. But I do think a girl with a certain gen a quad with the BBL, certain style of dress. It enhances certain, it. Yeah, and it, you know, certain men, I don't know if certain, I think they attract certain men. Them, those women attract certain type of dudes. It's like, how can I explain it? All right, so I go to the gym, you know, and when you go to the gym, there's be so many chicks in there with all kind of BBLs every day. And you got a couple of them that you could tell I got the BBL lady shapely. And they're going to attract a certain type of guy because maybe how they look or whatever. Because what I will say, the BBL is not the overall package. Because somebody can have a BBL, it still don't look that part. You know what I'm saying? I was just about to say you can't, you can't group people with BBLs because, you know, there's different, there's different classes of people no, that no, get that. It's not, you know? it's, I don't think it's a class of BBL. I think it's like... <clears throat> I, think, I think what you're thinking about, you're associating BBLs with bad bitches. Yes. So, <laughs> you no, but, what but, I'm that, but but you but no, but you have girls that who's not the bad oh, bitches that, that have the that BBL, have BBLs. But exactly. you can tell them apart. Yeah. So maybe the BBL girls. That's the bad that's bitch. That's the bad. Girl. Yeah, what you're referring to is the bad, bad bitches. Bitch, yeah. yeah. The bad bitch girl. It's the bad bitches. Yeah. yeah. They attract a certain type of yeah, dude. Yeah. They attract a certain. Type yeah. Because of dude, certain definitely. dudes ain't even gonna talk. Ain't even. It's out their weight class. They Yo, not even. I'm gonna be not, honest with you. <laughs> I was um, I was out with my peoples not too long ago, and we in the spot. And um, you know, we in a section or whatever, and dudes is busting it up. <laughs> These broads that's behind us. And Shorty had a Birkin bag and she had the rollie on. But she was, and my man was like, I'm not even doing it to myself, bro. I already know she looking for a sponsor. <laughs> so like, it's, 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 you understand what I'm saying? It's like, a different thing. Like you could tell, like you yeah, know what's what. And, and it's crazy because you know, he's a dude that's doing well for himself. It ain't that he can't if he's just like, bruh, like, I, I already know what, what you want. I already know what you want. You I already know what you're about. I already know what you want. Like, you understand? So, so why even waste my time? <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to end up getting a little something, but it's going to cost me God knows yeah, what. I, I, will t I will tell you this, though. Some of them chicks you could get. Yes, like, definitely. It's, it's, I was just about to say that, you too. You could get them for nothing. With, with nothing. Yeah, yeah, for nothing. With nothing. Yeah. It depends what type of... You know what I'm saying? Because I, you know, but you got to separate. There's some of them. Oh, who ain't even. Yo, did they bunch him, nigga? Bro. Why you talking to me? Yeah. Yo, cash at me. Like, straight up. You want my number? Cash at me right now. Like, why you talking to me? Let me see your account. Cash at me first, yeah. Like, straight up. Like, this, son. Like, it is. Yeah, what but it guess is. what? I try all you bitches. I don't give a fuck. I try all you niggas. Nigga, all the motherfucker do is tell me no. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And I try my, I press my luck. I don't care, B. But, you know, I'm a savage nigga. I don't, BBL, yeah, I no BBL. Yes, you no are. BBL. You the male Cardi B. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, fuck this nigga. Anyway, real quick. So, a California man discovers, this is crazy. Discover after 18 years, he been paying his neighbor electricity bill. I want to know what their electricity is a month, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, seriously. Like, their electricity must be like $50 a month, bro. Yo, he said, they, how he found out? Last he, month, my electric bill was $500. Yo, yeah, I had like $475 for my electric bill. My electric I don't even bill? Know, I don't even look at it every month, but I saw a bill that said $475. My bill was $500 last month, bro. Yo, you remember my electricity bill was like... $20, $40 or some shit like that. Yeah, I, How we get to this number? Uh, uh, New, New York City. Yo, let me tell you something. When I went to PA, that's another thing too. Like, things, cost of living is getting crazy in New York City for one. You know, um, I don't know if anybody checked hotel rates as of lately. Hotel rates are sky high. The other day, a room, I'm talking about a regular room at the Hilton downtown Brooklyn was $9.99 a, a that's night. That's crazy. $900. Yo, Suave, I need a hookup. Yo, bruh, $9.99. Oh, we didn't shout out Dusty ass Suave today. Swizzle, $9.99 a night. Now, another thing too, food in New York is sky high. When I went to PA, right, 
Um, when I first got there, because you know I had rented a house and all of that, so me and my daughter went to the supermarket to get some groceries and stock up the fridge. Bruh, I got pasta, I got ground turkey, um, I got spaghetti sauce, I got ice cream, and I got a fruit platter. Yo, you know that shit came up to eleven dollars. All that food came up to eleven dollars. In New York, that would have been like fifty dollars, bro. Yeah. You know, so crazy. We just went to Popeyes because I, you know, what I'm saying everybody went the other day. I said, let me just get some chicken on the way here, or whatever. And I'm like, so Swab, go get like a ten piece for like ten fifteen dollars. For like ten fifteen. <laughs> I ain't been to Popeyes in forever. Yeah, not nigga no more. Pa- nigga Swab called me, said, yo. It's 39 something. I said, what? Yeah, bro. I said, what? Yeah. I ain't been, a, I, I don't really eat that type of shit. Do you know what I'm Yo, saying? Yo, listen to me, man. And, and, and I keep saying this. Like, I think of the people who are making media income, and I do not know how they surviving in New York, bro. Like, because it's crazy <coughs> out here. Shit, I don't even know how I survive in New York, man. By the grace of God, I wake up every morning. God is great. God is great. That's all I can say. Some days, I think somebody doing magic tricks behind my back, bro. Like, I, somebody said abracadabra. Somebody when I look at the bills that I pay every month, when I look at the food that I buy every month, like, and I'm talking about this food, like, Yo, bro. I eat out almost every day. Like, you know, and I go to a good restaurant, but like the shit, my shit could be like when fucking $2,000, 2500 three grand for just Yo, bro, when regular I, shit. When I looked at what I paid in the last seven months in rent, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like this is like really ridiculous. Yo, my mortgage, yeah, my mortgage is the same shit. That, that shit is like. Somebody, but at least, at least it's mortgage. It's going back in your pocket. Yeah, like, some, that's somebody paycheck. Some what, what they get for a year, like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah this shit is ridiculous, bro. This shit is, the shit is, the shit is ridiculous, bro. Um, God, oh, God but it's bless. all good because Kamala's coming to save us, as C Style says. <laughs> I never told you that. That's what you said. <laughs> you said Trump coming to save us. Yeah, he is. Okay, we are gonna see. <laughs> we are gonna see. We go see, see, this nigga try, he always trying to drag me into some bullshit, man. And other celebrity news, um, T.I. and Tiny, man, they won a, a lawsuit against uh, Universal, I think it was. Who's who's against? Um, I don't even know. I think Who it was, a Jap- wasn't it a Japanese company? No, no, no. That no, had no, like no, some no. dolls? No, 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 no. They won it against, oh, I don't remember who they won it against, um, but it was like for their OMG. For the OMG, for the OMG girls, it was the, the dolls doll that, they that, put that, out. that took the OMG girls likeness, like, likeness and shit, and made, and they won seventy one million. See, I don't know what's the figure because every time I see it on the block, one place I seen seventy one mil, another place I seen seventeen mil, another place no, I seven, seen twenty five yeah. mil. Yeah, now I see this <clears> up to like seventy one mil, but it's continuous different thing, different stipulations and shit like that. But the highest they can get is like seventy one mil. Okay. So. So shout out to them, man. I thought T.I. was done. The Tiny was done out here. I never said that they was done, but anybody that thought it, they ain't done no more. They ain't going to have no problems with them electric city bills. <laughs> they be all right. So shout out to them for fighting for their likeness. And, you know, listen, man, hip-hop kind of rule the world with certain things. And people always want to take the culture and run with it. And this time we finally won one this week, man. Because <laughs> next week we, may not, we, not, we might not win one. So Next week they might be after T.I. go off again. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> they go... <laughs> Oh, you got the 71 mil, you think you're slick? Yo. Well, we got some for your ass. Oh, but man. I did see something dope from T.I. And, and, uh, and Boosie, man. They ran, I don't know if you saw that video. I they ran it. down on their son. Both of their sons was doing a song together. And um, they ran down on the video set and they had guns in the video. And they they basically did what dads are supposed to do. They stopped that dumb shit. Like, yeah, like, what like are you doing? y'all don't even come from that. And I'm glad he's, like, y'all don't even come from this life. Like, what are y'all doing? Yo, and T.I. was like, yo, why don't y'all go rap about some girls? Do something dope. Like, yo, I was so no, happy. No, that's not what he said. He said, why don't you expeditiously go rap about some females of the human nature? Like, <laughs> hey, come on. It's, it's Labor's <laughs> turns. Go rap about some girls. But yeah, man, like, I'm glad somebody said it, man, because, yo, why? Like, I don't understand. Yo, if you don't come from that shit, why you want to? That shit ain't cool, bro. It, it, see, but that's the thing. The thing is that the truth is society makes it look like yeah, it's cool. Yeah, but dying bro. ain't cool. Getting shot ain't cool. Going to jail <clears throat> for a fucking hundred years ain't cool. So why would you want to have anything to do with that? Because it's, it's just not cool. And it's the most saddest shit. When your nigga get 20 years in jail, it ain't cool. You, you know don't what feel I always good. Say? Even when it's 150 de- degrees outside, jail ain't cool. Nigga, <laughs> when your boy die, 
and get shot and killed, and you got to go to the funeral and put his body in the ground and the see funeral. it being lowered. His funeral and see his body being lowered. It ain't cool. So why you want to be a part of that? Like, why you want to glorify that? That ain't cool. I don't. I, I really don't get it. So well, what you have to understand is, um, and I always say this: the people who grew up in that understand. The people who don't. Things always look different from the outside looking in, man. That's that's the only way I could put it. And you know, people watch movies and they think that that's real life. Yo, yeah, guess what, man? It ain't real life, and it just ain't cool, bro. It's just not a cool thing. For y'all, this oh, oh, what else <clears throat> is not cool? Telegram, stop telling your business on it because Basically. now they're reporting your IP and your phone conversations. To the FBI. If the feds reach out, they will answer. <laughs> they would answer. So I don't know what else you could talk. Maybe you can still talk on video call, right? Like, signal. Uh, yeah, no, fa yeah, FaceTime. You FaceTime and like signal. FaceTime so. audio. Yeah, so you got to be, yeah, you got, yeah. Feds, is, they, they, they now turning in your, uh, your IP and your phone calls on Telegram. So stay off of Telegram, you know what I'm saying? Stop telling on yourself on Telegram. Well, in other rat news that this he would say, uh, Saw this this weekend. I really know how to feel. The Young Dolph case where uh, homeboy was deaf. I forgot his name, man. I don't know if somebody can get his name, but he was definitely convicted to life in prison. Mo gonna find it. I'll find it for man. um for killing Young Dolph. But you know, this week I saw the case open up, and you know he was on the stand giving his testimony. He alleged that uh, uh isn't it uh, Young Drop or something? A like young that? um Young Juke. Uh, no, uh, Big, Yo Juk, Gotti, Big Juk is Yo Big Gotti's Juk, brother. Yeah, Big Juk, uh, Yo Gotti's brother, alleged that he gave him, was supposed to give him $40,000 to kill Dolph. Straight drop. Oh, Rapper straight drop found guilty of the murder of a young Dolph and sentenced to life in prison. All right. So he said he was supposed to give him $40,000. He got $800 and he killed, he killed Dolph, right? And, um, and I'm sitting there and, you know, I know all the homies, they're going, yo, this nigga's a rat, right? And I'm, I'm sitting there, and I, and I guess two things could be true. I guess he could be a rat, <clears> and, and, and if, 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 if what he was saying was true about uh, Big Juk giving him that money, do we hold Big Juk accountable? Like, for him getting told, well, he can't get told when he's passed away, but do you, uh, do you want to take down a whole organization or whatever the case may be? I guess with with with, uh, with uh, Yo Gotti organization and say, yo, they only gave me eight hundred dollars, and that shit is crazy. That the price of life. Well, is somebody I'm, I'm, I'm killed just, for eight hundred dollars? I'm just saying. I think um, I think this situation is a great metaphor for what truly matters in life. Mm. Like at the end of the day, you know, Dolph was pushing what a two three hundred thousand dollar car. He had God knows how much jewelry. He had all this money in the world, but it only cost eight hundred dollars to take his life. Like, you know, people idolize all these superficial things that really don't mean shit, bro. Like, don't get me wrong, money's great because money allows you freedom. It allows you to take care of your family. But at the end of the day, you know, we have this tendency to think that um, it gives us this higher state of being, right? Where, where um. We're just on another level. But the truth is, look at this young man who worked so hard to get to a certain point in his life. And his life was taken away for $800, dollars. bro. Like, that shit is so eye-opening. Like, this man's life was taken for $800. Not only was his life taken for $800, but it was taken by some little niggas from the hood, bro. But even if it was taken for the forty thousand dollars that he alleged that he was getting paid, even if paid, it was forty grand, even that, if it was hundred grand, that shit wasn't worth it. <laughs> but 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 what I'm saying is, like, look who took his life. Like, this was literally just some little dudes from the hood. You understand what I mean? Like, it's just so, man. Sometimes I try to figure life out, and it's like there really is no figuring it out. To be honest with you. There really is no figuring it out because it doesn't matter what level you reach to. You're still, it's like you're still on the ground level because anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. Yo, listen, <clears throat> what, what this week has taught me, though, more than anything, I tell you, you know, Young Dolph was in the hood, I guess, picking up his favorite cookies. He was, he was doing, a, I think it was a, 
was it the turkey drive? Right, but yeah, but they said yeah, he always go there. Mm -hmm. He always go to that spot when he come to his hood to go pick up the chocolate. He loved chocolate chip cookies, and that was his favorite chocolate chip cookie spot. And we could run from the hood sometimes, right? And we go, yo, we got, we can't come back to the hood and we get rich and we leave. And I understand that too. But then I watched, like, you know, I watched the Eric Adams shit. I watched the Puff shit. I watched just a bunch of different things. I'm like, damn, you run from the hood. Then you run to the fame, and it's like, yo, everywhere we go, we still, it don't matter where we go, we get taken, if we don't get taken down by our own people, we get taken by the, down by the other people. And it's like, yo, where do we go? Where do we fit? Like, what, where do we fit in all of this shit? Like, where do we go in the, just to be safe? I think, I you think, know? I think it's the same way how, once again, like, when you're in the hood, you got to move a certain way. You stay on your P's and Q's, and I think that even when you leave the hood, and you go into these other spaces, right? You go to the suburbs or, or, bruh, you still gotta stay on your P's and Q's. Like you can't put your guard down as a black man in this world. Like that's the reality. And you know, and, and that's what I, I be trying to explain. Like, no, it's not fair, bruh. But the reality is if you wanna stay alive, right? It's like, I could say all day, Oh, it ain't fair that niggas is out here robbing people and I should be able to wear my jewelry and not have to move a certain way. But guess what? That can cost me my life. And it's the same way. I could sit here and say, oh, it's not fair that they target him, you know, uh, 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 successful black men. But the reality is that they are. And if we want to survive and we probably got to stay on our P's and Q's mm -hmm. and we got to move like as if we are aware of what is going on, because that's our reality, unfortunately. And until that changes, man, listen, we can't move how they move because the truth is, as a black man in this world, I don't care how much you're accomp you accomplish, your accomplishments are written in the sand, bro. And when they're ready to wash that shit away, they could do that shit in a second. Well, I was sad. No, I won't even bring that up yet. I will bring that up. I'll leave that for the last thing, I guess, because I can't talk about no more shit shit. Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. You be making me sad, bro. <laughs> but by is like, oh god, this shit is crazy. But uh, let me ask you this: Let's go back to the girls, man. Girls always make me happy. The ladies always make me happy until y'all make me sad too. But um, <laughs> until charges come up. <laughs> until charges, I ain't gonna have no charges, dude. The fuck out of here, Jesus. <laughs> Yo, it all started with the me too. Man. Yeah. <laughs> who who take longer to love? You think? Men or women? Who take longer to love? You know what I always say? I always say that men pretend to love you when they don't. And women pretend to not love you when they do. Well, some studies said that men take about 88 days to love, and I think women take like 130-something days to fall in love. I think girls fall in love faster than guys. What you think? Uh, I don't know if I, but when, when you really think about it, right, and let's, let's think about this. Let's mm. not think about a man that doesn't like a woman. Let's think about a man that likes a woman versus a woman that likes a man. Who you think falls in love quicker? Because when a guy's into a woman, man, he falls pretty quick. He no, may fight so it. This what I, he this may, what I he was, may fight it more. This is what I would say. I think women or into the guys faster. But when a guy is into a girl, he falls faster. He falls faster. I could agree to that. Yeah. He I, could agree to he, that. I think he falls faster. I think sometimes guys, we kind of macho, we kind of protect our hearts. We kind of protect, we ain't letting you into a... And, le and let me tell you something. And I know females, y'all not going to agree with this, but men usually have... A, well, men have unconditional love more than women do. Oh. Because men love women with no Sorry. conditions. Like, you don't have to do nothing for a nigga to, for him to love you, but for a, for a man... I always say that. Men love more... Men love unconditionally. Unconditional than women. Than women I, I definitely agree with that. I yeah, because a man has... There has to be... There's a whole bunch of conditions. He has to provide. He has to protect. He has to this, that, that. But whereas with a, with a man, like, you just literally just have to be there. That's it. <laughs> That's women it. love condition... Like, conditionally. Like... Yeah, they love conditionally. Condition yeah, it's like... If, if, if you, you do this, 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 I do this. I may love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I agree with that. Let me ask you this question. This is a fun question. How do you know when you're hitting it right? 
How do I know when I'm hitting it right? Um, what it feels like for one. Um, for two, how into it she is. You know. She, I have a question. When her leg do that thing. shake, when she <laughs> crazy with it, <laughs> that's how you know you hit it right. When she give you that shake, when she catch that Charlie horse, that cramp, you got them legs back, and she. And she give you one of them like she got shocked. <laughs> she started making ugly faces. Uh, yeah, you know that. Um, scratches on your back, on your arms, and shit like that. The grip. She give you that death lock grip and claw you up. I think that. Um, I, if she comes. I think a lot. If, if she squats. But I, but I, think, you, I think a lot of that could, could just come from passion, too. Yeah, but it still means you... You know, her. because you know some people just have... You know there's some people that you meet that you just got like wild sexual chemistry with them? Well, okay, cool. If you say that, then if she stalks you, you're hitting it right. <laughs> <laughs> if she stalks if you. She, if she calls you the next day. <laughs> if she stalking you. Yo, I need to see you. Where you at? But some girls be stalking me without even hitting it. I'll be like, yo, I, got, I can't even hit this shit. Man, this is great. You ever had you that? Have, yes, you have it. Well, I'm like, I'm not even touching this I'm girl. I'm not even touching Because this is going to go left. This is going to go straight left. She follow me around now, like calling my phone 50 times a day. Are you crazy? Yep. Like, nigga, I ain't even getting in the bedroom with yep. you yet. Um, I don't know. Maybe if she... Uh, Mm. What if she cries while you hitting? That's happened to me before. Yeah, she cried. I'd be scared of that. Shit. Now I'm gonna say, wait a minute. I'm afraid to even say that because that sounds weird. What? I told you, yo, bro. I'm hypersensitive to to, to charges these days, <laughs> bro. Well, well, go ahead and say what you gotta say. Bro. That but she cry cried while you was hitting it. Like that sounds kind of crazy. Oh, nah, but <clears throat> we're talking about happy tears, bro. I know what you're talking about. Talking about happy tears. I'd be scared of that, though. I don't want you... Because you start crying. Not because of the charges. I'd be no, like, I mean... I, no. I'd be like, she crazy. She like, like, especially if, like, your first time hitting it, like, nah. Yeah, I mean, the first time, that's kind of crazy. First time hitting it. What, you know what I saw crazy, though, today? Um, which I thought it was crazy a little bit. Maybe because of how big it was. I seen... Um, it was a Diddy House? <laughs> Yo, son, I slapped the shit out you right now, bro. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me, man. Yo, swab, catch that clock. Um, 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 uh, Wack 300. His girlfriend put oh, that. Oh, Wack 100 put that tattoo on yeah, her uh, yeah, back? Yeah, 100. Yeah, I said 300. Put that big tattoo on her back. I thought that was a little obsessive, but uh, you know what I'm saying? That was weird. Uh, maybe you're hitting the right. That shit weird, uh, that's bro. Weird. Yo, one time, I already told you this story about a girl putting her tattoo. If, if 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 my girl told me that she was, I'd tell her no, bro. No, he told he didn't he didn't know. She just came home with it. I saw the thing online. He said he didn't know. He, she said she didn't tell me or nothing. He said I just came home. He said I was just flat. I didn't know. Like she just came. I home. wouldn't be flat. That shit is weird. Yo, listen. He can't leave that forever because she might stalk. You can't even get rid that type of tattoo. You couldn't even get rid of. <laughs> he muggers, man. You got to put like a pumpkin on that head. That shit is weird. <laughs> like, that's the only reason you get rid of that shit. Um, it's, man, more power to me. He like it. I love it, man. But I you ever had a chick tattoo your name on? Yeah, son. That, that was a I had too. No, that was the craziest, the craziest situation though. So I was downtown Brooklyn on my Willie Bobo. You know what I'm saying? Downtown Brooklyn. You know I used to go downtown. I used to walk down. I used to work downtown Brooklyn. I used to walk through downtown Brooklyn every day just to find chicks. Walking every store. So one day, I, this was my thing. <clears throat> so one day I'm walking down there. I see this girl. She got mad. She she pretty. She got a little ass on her. Uh, red bone. And she got all these shopping bags. I'm like, what's up, shorty? How you? Uh... And she talking to me. You know, we switch numbers and shit. Shorty come to my house the next day. Yeah, it was the next day. We talk all night. She come to my house the next day. We, I beat. You know what I'm saying? It's good. Like, we have a good time. Cool. And now, when she came to my crib, again, she had mad shopping bags. So I'm telling you the shopping bags for a reason because she had mad shopping bags the day I met when her. You met she her. had mad mm -hmm. shopping bags the next day she came to my crib. So she calls me and be like, yo, I got something for you. So I'm like, oh shit, she already bought me something? Because she got mad shopping bags. Where'd she get all this money from? You know what I'm saying? Shorty comes to my crib. She jump out the cab and she got shopping bags. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna see what she got. <laughs> 
Oh, oh shit, sure. You was an East New York nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, she got me. So we go downstairs in my crib. When we go downstairs in the crib, she look, I want to show you something. And she put down the shopping bags. I'm like, why is she not going in the shopping bag? What would you get me? So I'm like kind of looking at her. So she takes off a shirt. I'm like, what you got? And she showed me my name, Styles. Big ass Styles tattoo in red ink on. And on. you met her how long ago? The day before yesterday. <laughs> and I said, yo. So I'm looking at her like, what made you do that? She's like, yo, I wanted a tattoo. I never had a tattoo. And he kept on asking me what I wanted. I couldn't think of nothing. And I'm like, yo, that name Styles is sound fly. And you were mad cool, so fuck it. I'll put your name on it. And if, and if, and if it's not about you and we ain't together, it's style, so it's cool. I was like, yo, you don't get the fuck out of here. But she was cool. Her name was Coco. I don't know whatever happened to Coco, but yeah, Coco, we, I don't know where you at, though. But yeah, that was, was crazy, Coco, bro. you still running around with Styles on your arm? <laughs> she had Styles on oh, all, man. That shit was crazy, bro. I hope you named your son Styles. That was crazy. <laughs> You, you, you said you had one. Yeah, yeah, no, I had a couple. Um, she says, yeah, we had a couple. Oh, you, you like that, huh? No, I actually don't. <laughs> I said you like that. You, oh, not oh. like 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 that. Nah. You said you like that. Uh, uh. Yeah, but that shit was kind of weird for me, man. That that'd be weird for anybody. That was kind of <clears throat> weird for me. You know, is this a study that says men with beards? That would be me and you, Mo. And a lot of niggas we know nowadays are less trustworthy. Are less trustworthy. There's <laughs> no stupid ass studies. I, I, I don't know. I feel like if you don't got a bitch, you look like a rapist, a fucking sexual assault kind of type of nigga. Right? Like, you a grown man with no facial hair. <laughs> no facial hair. I think that's more weird. Who you but... trying to fool, brother? Yeah. <laughs> look like you trying to sell me bean pies or something, nigga. <laughs> I, seen, I seen something. Um, this guy, he just got sentenced to 85 years because he tried to relive his youth. And he literally oh, went back to high school. He went back to high school. He, he was like back, four, five feet four, some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, he was 25 years old. Went back to high school. He was in high school for six months. Had a girlfriend and all of that. Man, and and the parents figured they 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 detected something was weird about him. Looked into him. Found out that he was 25 years old. They gave him 85 years. That nigga's crazy, bro. Well, bye bye to you. Um, Damn, homie. In high school, the you, second time you, you was the, the man, man, homie. homie. What happened to you? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy. It, it is not that serious, bro. It's crazy, 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 crazy. You know, um, there's a possibility next year, 2025, that we can be ordering sunlight in the dark. That's nuts. Like, we can go up to a sat even understand. some satellite that produces, like, get the sun rays and beam it right like, to right where Right on you your want. block. Yeah. It's crazy. That sounds crazy. That sounds nice. I don't want no parts of that. <laughs> like, Once again, human <laughs> beings playing God, bro. Yeah, I don't want no parts of that, man. That sounds crazy, man. That's human sad. beings playing God, bro. That sounds crazy. Human beings <clears throat> playing God. So, you know, we're going to bring the show to a close. But I want to give a RIP to Marcellus Williams mm. that was executed this past week. Although and evidence came out. Saying, DNA evidence at that mm -hmm. came out saying that, you know, the thing that he'd been saying that he was accused of all this time, wrongly accused of, that he was, wasn't a part of, he had nothing to do with. And they still executed him. This shit is and crazy. And they had DNA evidence, even though his family fought for him, the district attorney fought for him, the girl who was unalive family asked for him not to be executed. But I think it was the mayor, the, the mayor or the governor of the state that he was in still went forward with the uh, execution. You know, why they, you know why they do that, And right? And the, the, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, they had a vote, and it was six to three out of the Supreme Court judge to say still go ahead with the execution, even though there were new evidence that came up and proved, and proved that, that he, he was, was innocent. He could have been innocent, yeah. And my thing is like this, it, you know, for me, if there's an inkling, you shouldn't play with people's life. If there's an inkling of a possibility that somebody could be innocent, everything should be at a halt to a Yeah, because you can't undo that. You can't come back <clears throat> from murder. Like, you can't come back from killing somebody. 
So at, at all costs, instead of rushing the process, let's figure out all the evidence, even if some new evidence come while that person is still here with us, and figure that out. Because guess what? We got all the time to go kill somebody if we want to, but we can never bring them back. But I'm going to say this. We kill people who kill people because killing people is wrong. It doesn't make sense. It's an oxymoron. Walking oxymoron, around, man. But shout out to um, his family. Condolences. Condolences to his family. I watched his son talk about him and saying how he was prepared to go down to uh, be there and know, let his father know he's there with him if the situation came about before he got uh, executed um, by lethal injection. And I'm just sitting there, and I said, when I watched his son, I'm like, yo, <laughs> how you could do that? How you could even imagine that to be down there for your pops and that type of Man, yeah, all I can say is I'd have, I'd have wigged out, bro. I'd have wigged out, straight up. I'd have wigged out. I'd have been, I'd have been serving death sentences myself to people, bro. Like, I'd have wigged out. Like, come on, y'all not going to play this game with me. Straight up. Another reason why, you know, and I'm, I'm not bringing the presidential thing in it, but the reason why is we have to be diligent on whoever side you choose because they decide who the Supreme Court uh, judges are. And I'm not going Trump, Kamala, but Trump was in charge of this last batch of people that was in there. And this black man was sentenced to death. The vote was six to three, bro, with new evidence. So we got to be careful even when you vote. This election is not just about the president. There's a lot of Senate seats open. It's a lot of council seats open in this, in this election. So do your due diligence. I'm not telling you who to vote for or how to vote, but figure out who's doing what in your cities, who's doing what for your states, and, you know, make the right choices, man, as best as that you possibly can. You know, Mo used to say this thing, you know, go do your homework, man. Uh-huh. And, you know, man, with that note, man. Shout out to the Wood Stacey. Shout out to Wood Stack. Shout out to Shanice. Swizzle. Big Suave. Peter in the building. Tico forever. Tico you know? forever. Yeah, man, you know, we back here, same bad channel, same bad time. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Brooklyn, we out. Out.